Waterloo Station in London, boasting 24 platforms. It is the UK's largest and busiest station. But before this current train shed was constructed in 1922, another older station stood right here. This one was built in 1848 by the LSWR and it incorporated a now disappeared and little known and little used link line between the LSWR and the nearby South Eastern Railway. Welcome to another explore. <laughs> This is platform 9 and 10 at today's Waterloo station and although it's hard to imagine looking at this modern scene but it was here that the line emerged onto the concourse and continued on its way to the nearby South Eastern Railway. This photo dated prior to 1911 shows the link which was situated between the old platforms 2 and 3 and it shows that it must have had a removable gateway. It also shows signage which states South Station and North Station. And to understand this better, let's delve into the National Library of Scotland site and take advantage of their maps. So here is the modern overhead view of Waterloo. And in relation to our link line, the current Platform 10 is located approximately here. Now this line here, this is the South Eastern Railway and with the current Waterloo East Station here. Okay, so this is the same view but in 1894 and straight away we can see the terminology South Station here and up here we've got North Station. So what was this all about? Well, in 1848 when the first station was built at Waterloo, the London and South Western Railway held aspirations to construct their terminus on the north side of the river. Over the years, passenger numbers increased, and so additions were made by way of new buildings and extra platforms. By the 1880s, the site essentially held more than one station, and with platform numbers duplicated for each of these stations, it must have been incredibly confusing for passengers. This plan of Waterloo, dated 1888, shows three stations here, the south, the central and the north. After a number of refused schemes to build their terminus in their desired location, they secure permission in 1899 to construct the current Waterloo station, which we know today, which fully opened in March 1922. I'll now zoom in on the modern image. And take a look at this grey tubular structure. This is the current footbridge linking Waterloo with Waterloo East. We'll now return to 1894 once more and notice how the modern bridge lays exactly on the alignment of the former link line. So does that mean that this bridge used to carry the rails to the southeastern? Well, no. This bridge was installed in 1990 following completion of the new Waterloo East entrance from the Waterloo Main Concourse. Prior to that, however, passengers entered and exited Waterloo East via a different bridge, and that is what we'll look at next. Okay, so I've exited Waterloo Station now, and I'm on the bus and taxi pickup area. Let's just wait for this bus to go past. Okay, so you've got two like arches entrance ways coming out there and the station waterloo station and platforms is directly opposite on the other side of that wall if we turn round we've got a very similar setup we've got two arches they're very similar to see but on here let's just move a little bit cl closer and we've got a shutter in the way so i don't know how well it's going to look but standing a bit of a distance you can see the edge of the bridge there 
I think if the closer we get, the worse, yeah, the worse the view is. But you can clearly see it from a distance. Let's move across to the other side, and there's the other edge there. And that is the bridge that crosses over to the South Central line, and it used to carry the railway line. And if we look from the side, you get a pretty good view. Well, I've come down onto Waterloo Road as you'll get a much better view of the bridge from down here. And to my right is one of the north walls of Waterloo Station. And up there, we've got the lines on the southeastern line uh, from Charing Cross and Waterloo East. And directly in front, crossing Waterloo Road, you'll see the red bridge which carried the link line. This bridge, I believe, dates to approximately 1864. Uh, the bridge above it, that is the tubular structure which we saw on the overhead image and is today's pedestrian route to Waterloo East from Waterloo. Now this view from the south side of Waterloo Road adjacent to the station shows the southeastern line. And then here we have the bridge as it disappears into Waterloo Main. So we've seen where the line emerged at Waterloo and the surviving bridge down here on Waterloo Road. Let's now go and see if there is any evidence of it from the southeastern side. This is platform A on Waterloo East. I'm going to walk up to the end as far as I can. And our line would have branched off directly over there on the far side. A bit difficult to see from here. Well, I'm up in the inside of the tubular pedestrian bridge now, and I'm almost directly above where the line would have branched off to Waterloo Main, which you can just see at the top of the picture in the middle. After its construction in 1864, the Waterloo to the southeastern railway link line was never very heavily used. A service from Cannon Street to Kensington was initially run over it, followed briefly by a Waterloo to Wilson Junction service provided by the London and North Western Railway. These didn't last and it was reduced to rare stock movements and the odd special working. Finally, with the rebuild of Waterloo at the beginning of the 20th century, the link line was removed in 1911. The bridge over Waterloo Road is the only visible reminder of the line which closed 111 years ago. But I read somewhere that the point of origin regarding mileage on the South Western Rail Network is still measured from the point where the link line left the South Eastern Line at Waterloo East. Now, being in the position of working in the rail industry, I decided to put that theory to the test. This is the screen of a system called the Driver's Advisory System. It advises train drivers of station stops, speed restrictions, etc. as the train travels towards its destination. It also shows the distance in respect of the point of origin, which should be at zero miles and zero chains. Railway distance is measured using these units. When this was taken, the train was up to the buffers at Waterloo, but the mileage still says that we are seven chains away from the origin. That's 140 metres, and the distance from the buffers to the site of the link line is exactly 140 metres. But despite this short, little-known and underused line being consigned to history, it has in fact been immortalised by H.G. Wells in his 1898 novel, The War of the Worlds, when he described the arrival of a train using the line bringing armaments to fight the Martians. About five o'clock, the gathering crowd in the station was immensely excited by the opening of the line of communication which is almost invariably closed between the southeastern and the southwestern stations and the passage of carriage trucks bearing huge guns and carriages crammed with soldiers. 
These were the guns that were brought up from Woolwich and Chatham to cover Kingston 